Which players look ready to break out this season? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Tuesday, March 7th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. Let's get to breakouts 2.0, Scott, and we've got a few hitters for you, Scotty. Nico Horner and Lars Newtbar. Yeah, so what I like about Nico Horner is that, well, I mean, just for starters, you you run a side-by-side -side comparison between him and Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario goes 45 picks earlier on average. Uh, so Horner last year hit 281 versus Rosario's 283. 10 homers for Horner, 11 for Rosario. 20 steals for Horner, 18 for Rosario. So very similar there. The big difference, 481 at-bats for Horner, 637 for Rosario. And where that shows up in you know the, the stats that are actually worth something is in runs in RBI because Ahmed Rosario got to hit a lot more. He was contributing more of those. And, uh, and so that mostly accounts for the 45 spot gap between the two. But the reason Ahmed Rosario got to bat so much more, got all those extra run and RBI opportunities, is because he mostly hit second for Cleveland while Horner was batting at the bottom of the Cubs lineup, quite often ninth. Plan, the plan for Cubs manager David Ross this year is to bat Horner leadoff. So I think that gap between him and Rosario is going to close. And um, you may see very similar production at a 45 spot discount. I mean, maybe even better because this goes for both Horner and Rosario. They're both so fast that you could see them taking advantage of the new uh, rules to promote base stealing, the limited pickoff throws, bigger bases, et cetera, and becoming 30 steel guys and 10 to 20 steel guys. <laughs> so, um, you know, if that happens, then you're talking they're more in maybe like uh, 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 Tommy Edmond territory in terms of value. So, yeah, I like Horner to break out. All right. And the other one you had was Lars Newbar. We've, we've, yep. we've talked about Lars Newbar a lot here on Fantasy Baseball and Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Uh, let's... The, the breakouts that I have are Sean Murphy and Blake Snell. Sean Murphy being traded over to the Atlanta Braves. He's performed very well outside of Oakland in his career. 256, 334, 484 triple slash for him outside of Oakland Coliseum. He barrels the ball. He made more contact last year. And obviously now joining one of the best lineups in baseball in the Atlanta Braves. So I do like Sean Murphy and where he's going with an ADP of 133.6. And then Blake Snell, slow start as he usually has last year. Final 17 starts, 2.53 ERA, 1.11 whip, 12.9 K per nine. Lean into that slider and uh, the curveball a little bit more during that stretch as well. If there's every year that we could depend on Blake Snell to stay healthy, hopefully. Contract year. Let's get it done. Also pitches for a really good team. Scott, let's move over to some later round breakouts. You've got Reed Detmers and Garrett Mitchell. So Reed Detmers, he kind of already broke out last year, and I'm surprised he's not being drafted higher as a result. So it really comes down to his 12 starts before being sent to the minors, revamping his slider, coming back, throwing it three miles per hour harder, and the 13 starts after that. So 12 and 13 starts. The first 12, 466 ERA versus 304 in those final 13. 6.8K per nine before being sent down. 9.9 afterward. 9% swinging strike rate before it, 13% swinging strike rate after it. So just like a completely transformed pitcher, and, and all of those numbers are impressive for Reed Detmer. So if he could just pick up where he left off with the, that improved slider, I think uh, I think he could have a very big year in store. The other low-end one is Garrett Mitchell, who I was kind of skeptical of coming into the year. You know, he... he He's not the most disciplined hitter, which I never like, and uh, he his swing is uh, kind of compromises power potential. Like he's a strong guy, he should hit for power, but he he hits everything into the ground because that's just how he learned to do it, being such a fast runner. So um, there's the athleticism for a really high ceiling if he could do something about that swing, but I don't even think that's necessary. I mean, he's come to camp. 
obviously he's who the Brewers want to start at center field. Sal Freelich hasn't posed any kind of threat. It, it seems like very much the plan. Garrett Mitchell is our center fielder. He actually did hit two home runs in the first spring game. I, don't, I wouldn't count on a lot of those, but just by virtue of him being so fast, of him having eight steals in his first 28 major league games last year, if he can hit well enough to hold on to that spot that the Brewers very much want him to have, I think Garrett Mitchell's a pretty safe bet for like 40 steals. Uh, and that could make him a lifesaver in those five outfielder roto leagues where you know, maybe you didn't invest so big in stolen bases early. So I find myself gravitating toward Mitchell a lot late in those drafts. Garrett Mitchell, 99th percentile sprint speed last year, 70 grade speed according to Fangraph's prospect grades. A few more breakouts for me, Alec Bohm and Edward Cabrera. If you want to hear more about those, you can do so on Fantasy Baseball Today. Listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>